Good morning. You're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's Tuesday, the 26th of December, 2023. The last Tuesday, in fact, in this year. Are you excited? And it's Boxing Day as well. Yeah. But not, not the type that I have to box you. Okay. My name is Rumi Paulson. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> that will make me box you. Okay. My name is Rumi Paulson. Okay. <laughs> And I am Yamgul Agadi. Just to remind you, Boxing Day is not the day to fight. Maybe mm -hmm. you had a hangover yesterday, you had too much to drink, or you still have so much beer to drink this morning and you drink and begin to box. Boxing Day is a day to box open mm -hmm. the presents that were given to you on Christmas, Christmas day. day. That's the essence of Boxing Day. This year, there may not be a lot of presents in a lot mm -hmm. of households, but uh, Boxing Day is still Boxing Day. So. Mm -hmm. Take this time to review how the Christmas was and then maybe plan for next year. You unbox uh, your plan for next year. You can also Oh, that, that makes sense too. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be physical presence. Yes. It could also be um, mental. Yeah. So you're thinking of what your plans are mm -hmm. for next year. How do I start? In fact, not just um, having a vision, but the action plan to it. Yes. So you're trying to put those plans in place and say, this is what I want my 2024 to be like. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting right now, unboxing mm -hmm. my new mm -hmm. self. Yeah. Oh, I should write a book. <laughs> unboxing my new self. That's amazing. Oh uh, yeah, it is really amazing. <laughs> so, but today is Boxing Day. And I don't know how Christmas was where you are, but where I stay, Christmas was the thing. Mm. Uh, there was a lot of dancing on the streets and all that. Streets were blocked, roads were blocked. Mm. And I was like, oh, were these people not com complaining that there was no, no money, money in the country? So everywhere was noisy, but that's the thing. Uh, the noisier, the, the merrier in Nigeria. Yeah. In other places, you could get arrested anyway. But yeah. here, um, everywhere, there was music, there was joy, there was dancing. I got to a place where uh, there is a small market. Mm. And in that market, almost every street of the market had a, a DJ. Mm. And he was dancing away. That's fantastic. <laughs> I was so, so happy that people were happy in spite of everything. We made it this far. Yeah, I think for me it was the same. So immediately I left here because I was planning the party for my neighbors and I. So we organized the Christmas party, invited mm -hmm. all of our friends. So immediately I left here, I had to go organize, as a party planner that I am, mm -hmm. I had to go organize mm -hmm. everything and make sure the DJ was ready, the food, we had barbecue. It was really nice, you know, just having fun, spending time with your friends and meeting new people. Yeah. So there was just that merriment, there was just that chair, that thing that was just in the air. And then we had fireworks later at night. Mm -hmm. We partied for a while, I can't say how long, so that my <laughs> boss doesn't say, what? <laughs> but yeah, so we had good music, we had good vibes, good fun, and I think we're all just ready for 2024. Even though my friends were asking me, like, oh, are you guys going to do a New Year Eve's party? I'm like, go to church. <laughs> go to church. <laughs> yeah. So, well, it, funny thing is, it, don't, it doesn't really take so much spending to be happy. Yes. You know, some of the greatest parties you go to are not the parties that have everything. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, there are parties that have the people. Who are ready to mingle yes uh, the, it's to, a vibe yes that that's it I, a friend of mine was telling me how they organized the party in uh the hospital uh <laughs> the I'm, hospital. I'm sorry uh, my my face gives me away sometimes yeah but, but, yeah there was this the department the, um uh the department that she was uh she now said, what do you do as a bonding thing? And I said, no, we don't do anything because it's a government establishment. Most of these government establishments, you yeah. know, they just go to work, come back home, and that's the end. And she said, oh, no, I've never worked in a place like this. Let's do something. And everybody was like, eh, it has not been done before. And they contributed a very small amount of money, and it took them so far. I saw the videos, and I was really impressed. And I was asking myself, what what do people really fear when they think about parties? Oh, you. so the fear is, I know one fear is the fact that you would have guests that would come and they are not taken care of in terms of maybe having enough food for them, having enough drinks. You never want to go to a party and run out of food and drinks. That's like... But host the party one. is a party of friends. You don't even have to ever think about that. No, you because, have to think about that. You, you have know, to well, service. Let me tell you, you are of like minds, first of all. They know and understand when there is a lack. 
there are some guests that come to your party that and they bring never, something yes they bring something some some of them that's etiquette i think that should be some, some of them come to the party you don't know them you just mm -hmm. want to impress them and all mm -hmm. that but if there are people that are, you are used to you don't really feel it that okay there is no food if there's no food it's our own responsibility collective mm. responsibility but how but, many times do you have a party that is just you like your guys it's not all the it's not all the time most times somebody will invite so another on plus TV, one now, uh, at post tv we want to organize a party will we will we invite the commissioner oh yes i'm inviting the <laughs> <laughs> i'm inviting the whole street well, come party with us well your car <laughs> You have to dress your car. Some of them will sit inside. Why the car. not? They're not coming into the place where Why? we're having Don't. a party. Why? Because uh, we don't have enough food. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, we hope that you had a wonderful yeah. Christmas Day celebration. We hope that you felt all the love, all the cheer, all the merriment, and you had a good time and you're ready for the next year. So now we're just going to take some top trending stories and we'll get right into it. So our first top trending First top trending story today is the Ministry of Housing private de developers plan 100,000 homes nationwide. The federal government has entered into partnership with a consortium of private developers for the delivery of 100,000 housing units in 36 states and the federal capital territory. The agreement between the Federal Ministry of Housing and Urban Development and Continental Civil Construction and Cizali Limited will be delivered under a strategic public-private partnership as part of the Renewed Hope Cities and Estates in Estates program. Under the terms of the partnership, the consortium would provide construction, finance, and build the houses to completion based on the agreed housing designs and prices. While the ministry will facilitate provision of affordable mortgage loans to off-takers through the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, FMBN, the ministry will also facilitate the approval and grant of legal titles of selected land for the projects across the country as part of its efforts to create an enabling environment to massively upscale private sector investment in the house the housing sector. The Minister of Housing and Urban Development, Ahmed Dangiwa, who revealed this at the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding in Abuja, acknowledged the severe housing crisis in Nigeria and inadequacy of budgetary allocations to address the deficit. Dangiwa emphasized the need to increase asset access to decent and affordable housing as a collective endeavor, requiring the active participation of all stakeholders across the entire housing value chain. The minister hinted the target beneficiaries are both public and private sectors, adding that the project will be implemented in phases. Phase one will consist of 20,000 units in the federal capital territory, while the second phase will be 80,000 houses in select locations in the six geopolitical zones. The minister estimated that the PPP arrangement will create 2.5 million direct and indirect jobs as well as help achieve President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's target to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. Dangiwa also urged the consortium to continue to engage the technical staff of the ministry in the, in the citing, design, monitoring and cost evaluation of the project while urging them to ensure the delivery of the project within the agreed timelines. So, well, maybe 2024 <coughs> is looking up. Looking, That's if they can up, deliver looking them. Looking up to where? That's uh, if they can deliver them. I'm just happy that, um, I'm just hopeful that the confidence that one of our guests, uh, architect uh, Nyai Tok, has okay. on the Minister for Housing is, is going to play out and then we, we find out that something good will happen. As they're talking about having these 100,000 units, they should be talking about the, the criteria um, how to get the housing so that people can start planning. When yeah. you find out at the end of the day that these houses will be so so difficult to get, just like the student loans, mm -hmm. it's in, but they will be so difficult that the same people who have houses will be the ones to buy. buy. Let's say a house, a, a unit will cost $25 million. How many How many civil servants can get that? Civil servants who really need this so that when they retire, they have where they can go to. Because... Sometimes you find out you cannot even save any money yeah. until you retire. And when you retire, where are you going to? People who were home farming have houses you don't have because you were working for Nigeria. Mm. It's, it's really a sad thing. So let's say you're earning 100000 every year. 
and then the housing hundred thousand naira hundred thousand naira every year every month sorry. okay <laughs> every month <laughs> not the thirty thousand that is made yes. years, but you're earning up to a hundred thousand which a lot of them in very high uh, levels are not earning yeah. at this time so you're earning a hundred thousand that's just 1.2 million yeah so it means that it means that if a housing unit is 25 million which i'm sure at least uh, there will be. I'm already doing the math in my a, head. A lot of, lot of years ago, I saw housing units that were 15 million naira, and nobody in the civil service was Could able afford to it. afford it. It's the politicians that bought these houses. So if it's 25 million, which is being modest uh, to name that, it means that you are going to, if you, if, you, if you multiply that or you divide that 25 million by 100,000, you'll have like 250, 250 months of that person's uh, salary, salary that can get that. So if you divide that by 12 months, that is 20 years that you're looking at. Wow. So if 20 years is what you will To you now get one small unit. To not eat anything out of your okay. 100,000. All of your money. Yeah, 20 years. And how many years are the retirement years again? Okay, so you're having 30, 30 or 35 yeah. years as the case may be. And then... Out of the 35, you're using 20 years without touching, touching the money. Your money at all to get a house. Mortgage, does it work in Nigeria? I've yeah. not seen so much of this mortgage working. I mean, I've heard of um, off-plan. I think some developers, they call it off-plan, whereby you come and you buy the property even before it's built, mm -hmm. right? So that way it's cheaper. Um, the moment because they've already started, the yes, yes, so it's almost like they're using your money to build. So when they've started, the building is more expensive. When they are done, trust me, is the most expensive. So how much will you be giving per month? If you're earning um, 100,000. Well, so the funny thing about mortgage I've seen here, they expect you to have a down payment of like 20, 25 million, especially here on the island where we are. Mm -hmm. They're telling you to make a down payment of about 20, 25 million and you have to spread the balance in maybe like 24 months. And I'm like, if I have all of that money, why am I, do, would I come to you? <laughs> do you understand? Like, it's, it's ridiculous. And I don't even think they try to make housing affordable. While we are in this conversation, I know we're dwelling on it a little bit. I think houses in Lagos are quite expensive. Very expensive. Super ridiculously expensive. I, is there even anybody that actually um, mandates them that you cannot charge more than this? You see landlords. My former house, my landlord increased my rent by one million. One, it's a two-bedroom apartment. The rent was, I'm not saying that's the rent I was paying. I cannot call the rent I was paying. But the increase on my rent was one million naira. My service charge was increased with over 200%. I was paying over 1.6 on service charge. So now, guess what? And I, I only moved into the apartment two years and you're already putting all of these changes. Is there anybody that actually monitors them and tell them you cannot and charge well, more than this. Done on the nothing, house, whatsoever, nothing whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever. In I, fact, I took care of the house for you. So my own landlord just increased the rent. I uh, woke up one morning and said, okay, all of you, you are going to pay rent, a 300% increment. It's, and, it's ridiculous. And, and nothing could be said to, to change his exactly. mind. Exactly. So what did you do differently? What, what improvements came to the house? Nothing. Everything in the house, you will be the one to repair the meters, to, fix, to yes. repair the um, pumping machines, to repair the generators, everything that is in that house. It doesn't happen like this elsewhere. I think for them, um, they, they look at FX and they look at the cost of building a new house. But I'm like, bro, like you built your house like 15 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago. It is not the same as buying FX right now. Mm -hmm. So why are you charging as of right now? But... Something I've heard on the streets as well is that the agents don't help matters. So the yeah, agents they, can they, come they, and tell you, oh, don't worry. Yes, don't yeah. worry. At this house, don't worry. I'll get somebody that will pay five million for it. And maybe you're charging three million. And truly, there because be there will be someone because everyone is looking for a place to live. It's the same thing that happens in transportation. You have these uh, agueros that mm -hmm. we call them. That's the name that everybody knows. Uh, every driver knows that when you load your, your bus, you're going to pay... Uh, you're going to give them the cost of one person's transportation at least. So okay. if you're paying 100 naira, uh, everybody's paying 100 naira, at least 100 naira will be paid to the people who are just standing there to shout and say, oh, and have help I you see. Load. So if it is 1,000 naira, you're so going they to make spend, more. So, yes, so they make more uh, if the, the transportation can get, is, is yeah. more. So how will you 
think that those I people think, are I, 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 I think we need we need to have an expert and we'll talk to, to, to the producer I think we need to have an expert to come and talk about housing and how you can even access housing here are there affordable housing that maybe I haven't seen yet that I can easily afford and I how I can even talking save to a government um, functionary now that that will tell us plans that the government has because plans the plans that they have to moderate mm -hmm. what they're doing yes. and then also provide accommodation for yeah. the people yeah because i think this would be a burden on everyone at the moment i'm sure everyone wants wants that house everybody everyone wants a place to live a place to call home and so we're going to be asking this question so that everyone can including yeah. myself can Especially benefit from here it here in lagos yes you know, a lot of people maybe like at least 70 percent live on the outskirts of Lagos, mm -hmm. Ogun State. You see people coming into Lagos to work here. Yes. And the pay tax to Lagos State Government. The, the, state, right. the state shouldn't be that comfortable that people are suffering just to come and work in Lagos. And, you and you're getting their money. Yeah, so mm. it's, it's not... It's not Anyways, really we hope that this um, one... <laughs> this 100,000 houses will, I mean, do some good. And they will come to my state too, so I can buy one. <laughs> uh, well, you have to see arrest humanitarian ministries contractor probes for Buhari ministers. That's the next top trending story that we are taking right now. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has arrested the contractor, James Okwete, in connection with the ongoing probe into the 37 billion naira allegedly laundered by the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development under former Minister Sadia Omar Farouk. The development coincides with the probe of three other ministers who served under former President Muhammad Buhari for graft estimated at 150 billion naira. The investigations revealed that the 37.1 billion naira was transferred from the federal government's coffers and sent to 38 different bank accounts domiciled in five legacy commercial banks belonging to or connected to Okwete. Okwete, who is being held at the EFCC headquarters, Jabi Abuja, is reportedly cooperating with investigators. Umar Farouk was the pioneer minister of humanitarian affairs, disaster management, and social development. She was appointed by former President Mohamed Buhari in July 2019 as the youngest cabinet member. In 2020, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission said it uncovered 2.67 billion naira meant for the ministry's second feeding program in private bank accounts. The former ICPC chairman, Professor Bolaji Owasonoye, disclosed that the commission unraveled 2.67 billion naira in personal accounts, being payment made to some federal colleges of, for school feeding during the COVID-19 lockdown in 2020. Other discoveries by the ICPC include 18 buildings, 12 business premises, and 25 plots of land. Despite requests by the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project to Omar Farouk to publish uh, details and names of the suspects, the former minister failed to reveal their names till date. One, she was the youngest. Mm -hmm. We talk about youths. Uh, yeah, empowerment, politics, yeah. Youth should be in politics. Youth should be in politics. And then we talk about women. Mm -hmm. So this one was both a woman and a young one at that. And this happened. Hmm. I'm being careful because <laughs> when I talk about a woman, hmm. sometimes it becomes like, you know, uh, a, a, a lot of people I become mean, defensive. So I think for me, I, I like to go to the thought process of people. Um, why would you why would you want to do that? What's your thought process like when you were stealing all of that money? And it's even the life from you fabricating the fact that you fed school children while they were at home mm -hmm. during lockdown. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a blatant lie and the confidence in the lie. And then now we're seeing you with these properties, um, they're probing you and discovering all of these things. The funny thing is that for all the money spent, there will be receipts. Of course there will be. And I wonder how they manufactured this long bio or this long pen or pencil or whatever they use. Like, how you are a lady and, and you know one thing that we've always said is we want more women to go into politics we want more women to go into governance because women we naturally have empathy and they say a woman who 
who loves to nurture when something is you know entrusted into your hands you would want to nurture it so for instance if i'm given a house i turn it into a home if i'm given a seed or uh, one one food i make it into a meal and so you'd expect that for a woman who would go into politics you're going there to change the narrative you're going there to make it better a better system than what it is now so how do you go there and because I know, I know people say, oh, you go, you might say you want to be this way. And when you get there, you're finding yourself in the midst of people who are corrupt. And soon you start to become corrupt as well. But why can't you go there and say, I want to be the change. I want to change the narrative. If everyone is corrupt, I'm not going to be corrupt. But now you're not going there to be corrupt. You're going there to be overly corrupt. Well, maybe they just take the other thing that you didn't say about women too is that whatever a man can do, a woman can do better. Yeah. So they now do the negative we'll better. <laughs> no, <laughs> we don't do that. I'm, I'm not saying... The, the general thing is that if you're a criminal, you're a criminal. Whether you're a man or a woman. Yes. Criminality doesn't the, have, have gender. a gender. It yeah. Doesn't. Dora Queen Lee was a woman and she did fantastically well. Yeah, she was Even amazing. Now God rest her late, soul. We still remember her mm -hmm. for the good works that she yeah. did in wherever she was. With, talk, talking about um, the other woman who died of um, one of the. It wasn't there was there was something there was a pan not a pandemic but there was something in the air and she had she say she had to save lives. Oh, was, yes, yes. Was her, um, uh, uh, that devil. Yes, Not yes. Sure what was what yes. was the thing that happened? That was uh, when the um, was it the Senegalese or something? Yes, there was there was came, something that happened um, to people's skin and all of that. It's it was not Ebola. COVID. Thank you. Ebola. That's what I was trying to get. Yeah. So you're seeing like this woman is still celebrated till today yeah. because I mean she sacrificed her life and we were grateful for that um, when Ebola came. So you're seeing women do all of these things. There are conferences. They are seeing women um, championing and they're you know trying to get younger women to move along that stride how do you go there and you do all of that we're talking about Desiani now she mm -hmm. went into politics mm -hmm. was the minister of petroleum resources and we see a lot of houses in Asokoro that still belongs to oh I've been there like you see it marked she's somewhere in another country now claiming citizenship so this is my problem they probe you and it's easy for you to move away and nothing is being done there's Yanni still work, working freely. This woman that we're talking about right now, there's every possible chance that she will still work freely. Forget all this probing. Forget it. But every every government just finds uh, scapegoats. Yeah. You know, right now, it, it could just it, be a smoke screen. Uh, right now, it's a mayfield that they um, they they is the is the man in town? Yes, because. How can you tell me an investigator has investigated and found out that the president did not give approval for something as critical as the redesign of the Naira? It's not, it's not possible. possible. It's not possible. And so many other things that they've said the president didn't know. Are they trying to exonerate the former president? Because mm. it will be the first time that they'll, they'll probe a president or an mm -hmm. ex-president. So they're trying to be careful. Trying to be careful and cover up a lot of things. There's nothing that happens under someone's watch and you exonerate him. Mm. He is he's is the, either guilty of it of or guilty of incompetence. Mm -hmm. So why did he stay eight years if he couldn't even know that this Naira redesign, for instance, that he also was talking about and you was are the supposed president to be of the his, Federal Republic of yeah, Nigeria. We couldn't we, sh we shouldn't be taking this thing. It's mediocrity. We shouldn't You're be celebrating this mediocrity. Thing. Nigeria is bigger than that. A lot bigger the than giant that. of africa so humanitarian affairs minister right now we have maybe one of the youngest ministers also in that uh humanitarian ministry and we've known her for being a very hard working lady and all that i hope the bug doesn't bite her yeah because that's the thing i've seen a lot of good men and women go bad when they enter politics yeah but i've also seen uh men who are good stay good even in politics for yeah. instance right now in this government People keep talking about what the Borno state governor is doing right. in, a, in a ravaged state like that, mm -hmm. where Boko Haram had the seat and all that, and he's still doing well. How does still he do thriving. it? So how does he do it? So if it, one person can do well, it means if we can have 30 of them doing well, we'll yeah. have a Nigeria that will not have so much to complain about. So I think if you are light... Anywhere you go, you shine the light. Mm -hmm. You don't go into politics, though you may seem dark. You don't go there and say, oh, I'm going to turn off my lights. 
and become dark. You go there and you shine your light and you stay true to yourself. As long as you stay true to yourself, you never know. Someone might be watching you and they start to pick up these little things like, oh, I want to do mine better this mm -hmm. way. Or, okay, I noticed that I don't really need this money that I'm stealing like that. Maybe I don't need to steal as much. Next thing, they start to reduce it. Poverty mentality. Is so even in politics, I, yeah, even in politics, I think when you get there, um, don't just, don't follow the bandwagon. Go there. Do what you are supposed to do. Serve your people diligently. That's all we ask for, of you. Do that and, I mean, let your conscience well, be free some too. Some people's light are like candles. The others are like matchstick. So the candle will burn for a long time. The matchstick so yeah, will match go up. <laughs> <laughs> You light another person and then you go up. That's mm. what's happening. Well, so. anyways, let's take the final top trending story. So the federal government launches grants for poor, vulnerable groups in Cross River today. Not a scam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a scam. Hopefully, it's not a scam. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation, Dr. Beta Edu, has declared the federal government's intention to launch grants for the very poor and vulnerable groups in Cross River State. Beta Edu said this on Saturday, the 23rd of December, at the 15th coronation anniversary of the Obong of Calabar, Edidem Eko Okon Abasi Otu. Five, the five, the fifth, which also coincided with the yearly Utomo Obong Festival. In a statement by her special advisor on media and publicity, Rashid Olarawaju Zubair, the minister reiterated, re reiterated President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's determination to stamp out poverty in the country, ushering in a refreshing dawn for poor and vulnerable Nigerians. According to her, Cross River is dear to the president's heart. Hence, the federal government, through her ministry, will on Christmas Day, which was yesterday, flag off grants for the very poor, vulnerable groups in the state in partnership with the Cross River state government. The minister noted that her ministry has a checklist of would-be beneficiaries of the scheme having reached out through the traditional rulers to all communities, wards, villages, and people to select those who, meet, who met the criteria with Tinubu's Renew Hope agenda. Edu described the Utomo Obong Festival as a classy celebration of the rich ethnic cultural heritage. She congratulated the Obong on its 15th coronation anniversary, as well as the success of the festival. It might not be as calm. Calm down. I'm Relax. Calm. I'm, really calm. I'm so calm. Relax. So, so calm. I'm just well, thinking about my village, okay? Yeah. The poor in my village. You're from Cross River, right? I am from Cross River. I, I So I think maybe it's your duty. You go and tell us. You you know what's sending you? You come back and you tell us who Let me have tell gotten you what will happen. these grants. Let me tell you what will happen. The government doesn't have the um, phone numbers of the traditional rulers, except maybe uh, the... Uh, one or two clan heads or the paramount ruler of every local government area. The people they send are the chairman and then the councillors. The councillors will go and tell the chiefs, um, but they will, at the end of the day, choose the loyalists to the party mm. and then give these grants to them. That poor woman who sits there and maybe cracks kernel to sell before she can feed will not be captured. And if she's captured, how will she get the money? Will it come through the bank or someone will bring a Ghana must go and money share, and then share to the five five key. They have no data. So what are they using? They said Christmas, which was yesterday. Mm -hmm. As at this moment, I'm not sure there is any data that tells who is poor and who is not poor in Cross River State, at least. Mm. I don't know about other states. We even know that the the data which is which we don't believe in of the previous administration was jettisoned by this administration. Yeah. They said there were discrepancies here and there. So which data are they using? So they'll just dole out that money and give to the politicians. So, so, so maybe it's not a scam from the, the federal government. Yes, from the federal it government. But they, if they're going to give it to these traditional rulers, most of them might just keep it for themselves. They will not give to the traditional rulers. That's what I'm saying. It will go to the councillors that will now... Maybe they'll go to my village, which is an agrarian village, and then give uh, one carton of herbicides to the entire community. Uh, to use stop and it, farm. stop it. It, it has happened it. before. You, I know, and I know you're just trying to milk it. No, no, no. <laughs> it has happened before. I've seen these things happen. You also know that there were palliatives that were given, right. even though it was not something that I, I applauded. But there were palliatives that were given that some politicians kept to distribute for themselves during their bad days. 
Ridiculous. Until some of these things went bad. bad. So right. if you see this kind of things and they tell you we are going to give palliatives, you know it's a scam. You, they, we are going to give fifty uh, percent of this on transportation. They, that they have, they have. Uh, okay, we are going to have it in of the press that they have extended it to non-luxurious buses and all that. So the ones that they they give in the first instance are not working. So which one are they giving now? Who are the non-luxurious buses? Will I go down the streets to a bus driver and tell him, it's oh, just a scam. the federal government has said I can only pay 50% right now. He will just look at me like... The thing is, the money is leaving the federal coffers. Yes. But if it leaves the federal coffers, where does it go to? That's I think thing. it's floating up here. Like, it comes like this. It, it's never downstream. It comes like this and it stays like this. Mm -hmm. So, it's probably coming from the federal government. Maybe they give it to, like, the... Um, state government or the council or whatever it is and then those people would now say oh let's keep a chunk when which is here but what, what can you do when they send a truck load of rice for instance to a whole state what or I, even a whole local government and then a state is boasting and clapping for themselves that mm -hmm. they have done these palliatives to 200 uh, 2500 households for instance or 3000 households in a state that has at least 5 million people 2,500, not even 250,000. Yeah. You're talking about 2,500. So how do you even it in the news. select like, the few? How do you select them? Is, is, the, is the shame that they don't have that really... But do you know, do you know this, I feel like we've passed this. You know when they say you're bigger than something? Mm. I feel like we're bigger than this. Because how can you say you're sending money or you're sending food or you're sending any form of resources to someone and you don't monitor that those people you're sending it to actually get it. How can I send something to maybe my younger brother, right, through my immediate brother, and then I'm like, oh, send this to the youngest one. I have to be sure that he, the person I'm sending it to gets it. So how can the federal government be giving this little, maybe the poor people, some form of palliative to cushion the effect of the economy right now, and then they don't get it. You're, you're not even sure if they get it. So that means you're not bothered. You're not bothered if people siphon the money. Even for you, maybe you, you're cutting your own... Co you're cutting your... No, let's yeah. be honest. That is true. It's true. You, you, from the federal government, some people will tell you, oh, before I send this money, me, I'm removing 20% or 20% is a good deal. It happens in the local government. Yes. Governors will tell chairmen of council, chairmen that are supposed to be the closest to the people, uh, this, this month I'm sending 5 million to your local government. At the end of the day, the chairman signs... And guess maybe one one point five million Ridiculous. or two million. The other money stays with the state government or the state governor. And this so is almost like photo up, thing. like you just make believe. So that's why in was it in Ogun State? Uh, one of the uh, uh, chairmen complained that yes. the money they have been t talking yeah. about has never reached yes. them. And guess what? He's no longer a chairman today. He's Can we even talk about like his other civil service chairman ganged up against him? You should never say these because animals. now you're cutting okay. our own butt. And then he was removed. That's it also happens in the civil service as well. So maybe, um, or yeah, even for startups, if you're trying to do a contract for them, the contract, the, the people who are awarding the mm -hmm. contract to you tell you, oh, write this amount, but mm -hmm. this is what we're giving you. So when you put your invoice in, and I'm, I'm, trust me, I'm not talking out of, out of I know. it has happened to me. I know. And you send in a quote, and then you send your invoice, and trust me, the amount they're paying you, tr about 30% is out. What about Who is it you, going to? When the buses. Go, when you go for a workshop that is sponsored by maybe a foreign body, and maybe what you're supposed to be paid for being a participant is 100000 and then you're signing and you're collecting 10000 and then the people that organized it are going to take the remaining money. It has happened a lot of times. Corruption so, has eaten you know. so deep. And I think, well, but we, like, we, like we need to start. I, guess yesterday I was about said, to say that. It starts with you. Yeah, like I guess said, yeah, it starts with you. Uh, if you think you cannot make the difference, stay in one room with a mosquito. One mosquito. Which means you can make the difference. When the last president, Muhammad Buhari, was coming into power, everybody adjusted because of just the body language. Until right. they found out that he was not aware of a lot of things, mm. and they skyrocketed. They, they, they doubled their skill in corruption mm. and all that. But you know that if you are upright enough and you are aware of your surroundings, there's a lot you can do by not doing what everybody else is doing. So you can be that difference if you're in the place of authority. Yeah. Um, this is not... Election has gone. 
But during campaigns, a lot of people that thought that um, Peter Obi will not win, for instance, kept saying that because of the kind of man that he is, they will not allow him go there. Because mm. imagine Peter Obi um, spending, for instance, like uh, the COP28, mm -hmm. taking 800 people to COP28. He's cutting do down that? every... Do you understand? To go and stay in so the some people will feel like I might not be able to make as much as I would. Mm -hmm. If I have someone who's as corrupt as I am. So if imagine him finding out that you, his minister, is taking this kind of money, you sleep in jail. So there are Anyways. people like that in Nigeria. Nigeria can still work. It's yeah. just one day we will make that choice. Yeah. Maybe we wouldn't know that that is the choice until he gets into office yeah. and shows us that it is possible. Yeah. At least when Obasanjo was going into um becoming a president a lot of people thought he was a stooge mm. that he will be At doing the, time, the bidding yeah. of the northerners or the people who put him there because it, he came straight from jail to mm. the presidency but when he got there the man turned tiger <laughs> <laughs> he did what he could do yeah uh, and left the rest to God. Yeah. So I think at the end of the day, it's just making a decision. Even wherever you are um, in your own little corner, mm -hmm. make that decision. Say, I'm not going to be corrupt. Say it with me. I am not going to be corrupt. Mm -hmm. And don't be corrupt. Anyways, we'll go on a quick break. And when we return, we'll look at what the National Dailies are saying this morning. But let's check the weather first. See you soon. <laughs> 